What does a beer truck and the omnibus have in common? Well, stay tuned to find out. Today in Promise Park Pass, we're gonna do the secrets revealed of the Main Street vehicles. That's the Omnibus, the trolley, the little horses, carriages, all of it. And I also wanna give a huge shout out and a big thank you to ties.com. They sent me this tie. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to it. The first car we're gonna talk about is the horse drawn carriage. You can board it right here in front of the Disneyland Railroad train station on Main Street. The Main Street horse carriage runs right down the middle of Main Street on a track. It's a one-way ride. And they have four different types of horses. It's like, oh, five. I told they have five different types of horses. What are the five different types of horses? We have Shires, Bourbons, Clydesdales, Percherons, and we have a uh, Bourbon Ross. Each horse has their own individual name tag right there in the cart. Our horse today is Chad. I'm sitting here next to Bree. She's going to be our driver. Here's some really cool things that I've learned. So this, there are two different horse carriages that are going at the same time. So there is like a little division down the middle of Main Street so where they pass each other. How do you time that perfectly so you don't get stuck in the wrong place? Our castle car, so the car next to the castle is technically called the bump car. Okay. So we leave first. When the other car sees us leave, they leave. And then we meet right in the middle. Who knew? When the park first opened, the carriages would go to the right around the hub and spoke. They changed it so to go to the left, it makes it more efficient actually with the vehicle. So vehicles go to the right, the horses now go to the left. It makes it a figure eight just to even it out a little bit more for the horses, so they're not just pulling to the to the left every time. Now they're kind of evening out their their pulls. Disney, they just they think of everything. They redid the brick down Main Street, and one of the reasons I was told is that brick actually on the outside track makes it softer for the horse's feet. These horses are so spoiled, I think they have a great job. They work two to three. She's not, she's not. Bree's nodding. Yeah, they are. They get lots of apples and carrots. They work two to three hours about three days a week. But the younger horses work a little bit more because they get antsy and they want to get out there. And the older horses, they uh, get to relax a little bit more. And I love that Disney really takes care of their animals. One of the conductor's jobs is they also have to clear the way of the path for the horses to go through. It's exactly what they're doing right now. Each of these horse carriages can carry up to about 30 passengers and go at a leisurely four miles an hour. It's a one-way trip. A lot of times when you get in the park, you just want to get in the park, you want to get in and hit some rides, so you skip these wonderful attractions Make sure you ride the horse carriage. It's awesome. It's fun. Disney actually purchased these horse carriages with his own money because he wanted to be one that was in charge of them and owned them. They've been refurbished since then, but they were here on opening day. I don't know if you knew this, but Disney was on a polo team and loved horses. Hence, we have the horse-drawn carriages here. So when you're riding this, you're riding a piece of Disney history. If you have a wheelchair or a stroller, you can actually fold those up and put them right here in the back. Now, if you have one of those electric scooters, I think they're the ECVs, you can't take those on here. You have to park that and take a round trip all the way around to come back to it. I recommend this. This is so fun. It's one of my favorite attractions. We also allow service animals on board as long as they can sit in between the, the owner's legs. Miranda, when they ride the ride, they got to stay in the ride the whole time, right? No hopping on and off, right? Yeah, it's a safety issue. You have to remain seated at all times with all hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the streetcar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> So right here in front of City Hall, there are two places where you can board the Main Street vehicles. You have the fire carriage and the horses carriages, those little putt-putt cars. Right over here is the fire engine entrance. And about 30 feet away, this is where the little horses carriages entrance is. These rides, there's no fast passes, there's no single rider lines. It's just a leisurely ride down Main Street, reminiscent of a bygone era. So here I am in the fire engine. This is the actual seat that Walt Disney sat in. Walt's official last photo was taken in November 1966 in front of the castle, sitting right here, and Mickey Mouse was standing right next to him. Come down to the fire engine, sit in this seat, and it will sit right where Walt sat. I don't even know why, I'm starting to get a little teared up on that one. I just, he was such a good man, and he did so many good things for us. <laughs> Right in the back, there's a bell. Kids can ring it, you can ring it, your friends can ring it, whoever wants. What's interesting is you talk to a lot of drivers, they'll say that the kids usually want to ring it really loud. Bing, 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 bing. And adults, they just barely ring it. 
<laughs> I feel like an adult now. I'm here with Steven. I got a question to ask you. Yeah, sir. Is it true that this bell right here in the fire truck was here on Disneyland on opening day? From what I come to understand, yes. And But it made its here when the car came out. August 27th, 1958, this vehicle turned 60 years old. So we don't know where the bell was originally, this was put on the car. So probably on the boat or the Columbia or something like that. And then it made its way to the vehicle. It's been here ever since. I love it. Uh, I love your mustache. Thank you, sir. I love it. You know, I have a little growth here, too. I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me. Ah! <laughs> I was <laughs> Show them your awesome suspender shirts. You're different than the other truck. That is than correct. Vehicle drivers. Right. Red shirt. Black pants. Doc Martens. Way to go. <laughs> Yeah, you know why firemen wear suspenders? No, oh, why? To keep their pants up. <laughs> so Disney legend Bob Gurr designed this particular vehicle at the Disney Studios about 45 minutes away. Now, when it came time to deliver it, he didn't want it on no flatbed truck. No, he personally drove it all the way from there to here on public roads. Back then, there was no freeways, so he just did all the back roads to get here. But every once in a while, they'll take this vehicle out on a public road to be in certain parades. All right, round trip is 1,987 feet. Now, how far does this car travel within a year? About, are you waiting for it? About 23,000 miles in a year. <laughs> this vehicle is patterned after 1916 France fire engine. The fire engine is built a 5-8 scale, just a little bit bigger than a half-size scale. You'll notice that these vehicles turn to the right where the horse carriages turn to the left. This vehicle's top speed is 35 miles an hour, though here on Main Street it's a nice leisurely pace of 4 miles an hour. The Main Street vehicle rides are some of the favorites for little kids, so if you have little kids who are coming to Disneyland for the first time, ride the fire engine and they can be given one of these Junior Mickey firefighter stickers. The view right here from the fire truck to the castle is amazing. Brass is a very soft metal. Now this is the original brass here, and people use this part here. They grab it when they're getting on and off the fire engine. After a while, it's kind of dented the metal, but it's, they just keep the look because it looks so authentic. That is why that's dented in there, is all the people using it as a handle to get in and out of the fire engine. Tell me, what, what are all these little gears and things here? So we put the key, this is the safety brake, and this is the shifter. How many are a clutch, brake, and accelerator? Gas pedal. Now how many gears did they have? Three forward and one reverse. The reverse is very strong. You have to go back up a hill. Really? Absolutely. Now, you gotta show the accelerator again, because you think when you think of a car, you think of a big pedal. Look at this accelerator. It's so cute. Well I ask you very confidently. What is an omnibus, you might be wondering? Well, it's a double-decker bus. It's reminiscent of the 1920s in New York City, the buses that run down Fifth Avenue. This bus has a riding capacity of 45 people. And you want to get a really cool view. You want to go up on top because you get a great view of the castle. But on the lower level, they have the nice plush leather seats. They're so comfortable. You can sit up front here with the driver or go up the top. The omnibus was designed by Disney legend. Bob Gurr, of course it is. And he was delighted to do it because his father and uncle actually worked for the Omnibus Corporation. So he was thrilled to have the opportunity to do something that was in his family's heritage. The original Omnibuses that were here in Disneyland were shipped to Florida in the 1980s. So they had to rebuild two new ones, which are actually larger than the originals. Now, something really cool about the Omnibus that the other vehicles cannot claim. When Disneyland first opened, these buses would take people right into Fantasyland and come back. But with the construction of the Matterhorn, it really narrowed the walkway there, so they were no longer able to have buses travel back to Fantasyland. This is the only vehicle that ever did that. The Omnibus has four gears and a reverse, so five gears total. Max is about 35 miles an hour, but it goes at a leisurely pace of four miles an hour on Main Street. The upstairs has wood benches, where the downstairs has those nice red plush leather seats. One of the problems that Bob Gurr had when he was designing this was how to make a double-decker bus fit in the narrow Main Street. It's only 5 8 scale, a little larger than half scale. So what he did is he used a chassis off of a beer truck and they hold a lot of weight and a low center of gravity, which means that they can have a lower walkway on this particular 
Omnibus. The Disney vehicles start to operate in the morning, but they pull them off the street around noon because of crowd control. So if you want to ride them, be sure you get here early and ride those vehicles because they're not going to be here in the afternoon or evening. This here, this red car, is very special to Disneyland because this is the original car that was here and started all the Main Street vehicles right here. It takes eight minutes to make a complete round trip. Originally this was a truck they had at the Burbank Studios and they weren't sure if it could handle the day-to-day -day rigors. And then they decided to bring it to the park. When they brought it to the park, they converted it into a car. Matt, this is the original car in Disneyland. Original car, very first car, May of 1956. Red Park opened in 55, it's almost a year after the park opened. So when you come to Disneyland, you really want to ride this red car because this is the one that started it all. Now there's also a yellow car that's very similar to this one, and you can ride each one, they're both super fun. A nice little fact though, you hear the, like, the putt putt sounds of the engines? That is actually a simulated sound that they put in the engines, so it's not authentic to the 1920s cars. <laughs> All of these cars originally ran on gasoline. By the 1980s, they switched it over to compressed natural gas, which is so environmentally friendly. That's just Disney for you. This is a two-cylinder, 10-horsepower car. Now, the horse carriage, that's a one-horsepower car. This car has the top speed about 25 miles an hour, but here in Main Street goes at a leisurely pace of about four miles an hour. It's 1,987 feet round trip. This car gets about 23,000 miles per year. It started in 1956 and now it's 2019. Go ahead and do the quick math and put in the comments how many miles this car has driven. Over 100. This video has been all about the vehicles down here at Main Street. I hope you guys have learned something new. And if you have not taken the time to ride these vehicles, make sure you do it. It's a part of history. It's a part of Disney magic. And it makes the whole experience complete. Frankie Jr., this is for you. Are you ready? This is the worst cartwheel that I can do, but thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. I wish I could do better, and I'm here doing it in Galaxy Dead because of you. If you want to learn more about Main Street, click right here. We have the secrets revealed all about Main Street, one of the original lands. Make sure you take time to ride these vehicles because it's a part of Disney history. And for an additional $3 a month, you get another Provost Park Pass video. If you can't get enough of us, all you have to do is click that link down below and you'll get that extra video a week. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great week. Bye-bye, everybody.